Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Des Reacts back with another reaction video, and this is the British SAS soldiers versus US Navy SEALs military comparison. And this is a highly crusted video, and this comes because, you know, I think Navy SEALs are the best of the best, but we're about to find out. I just did a reaction video on the SAS. If we have what it takes to become one, go check it out. It's in my most recent upload. Um, but yeah, man, this is this is about to be a good one. The two best of the best special operations in a little animated comparison. Obviously, it's not going to show the ins and outs, and this isn't about who's better, who's not, I guess. But this is going to be a, a great reaction. Um, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and leave it leave in the comments. Who do you think's better, SAS or the U.S. Navy SEALs? Let me know. The British Army Special Air Force, aka SAS, began operations in 1941 during the Second World War. The reason for having such a specialized set of soldiers was to get behind enemy lines and attack them from within, or at least destroy what they could while gaining intelligence. It still takes part in operations that involve the United Kingdom, but as it's very much a covert special forces unit, much of what the SAS does is a secret. The Navy SEALs, Sea, Air, and Land Team, was formed much later when President John F. Kennedy established them in 1962 as a clandestine unit which like the SAS would take on special missions much of the time and very I'm just playing but uh, yeah but the SAS I know for a fact they're the grandfathers of special operation units so if it wasn't for them it might have took a very long time to come up with a special forces unit hostile environments. They also act under a veil of secrecy and are sometimes referred to as America's secret warriors. If both these units are so secretive, then how does one get a job with them? Well, with the SAS, there is a small problem to begin with if you are a mere civilian. They won't allow you to apply. So to start with, you must already be in the British Armed Forces or be a soldier in the British Commonwealth. Another way to get in is to join the SAS Reserves, and they do accept civilians. As long as you've passed the reserve training and worked with them at least 18 months, you can apply to work in the SAS proper. To apply for the SAS, you should be between 18 and 32 years of age and be in amazing physical and mental shape. You'll be required to do at least a three-year stretch. Women can apply, but have so far been excluded from most combat movements. To apply, you must accept that you know the harsh demands expected of you, people have died during training, and that means signing an Army General Administrative Instruction Form. You're basically acknowledging you are willing to go through hell. Next comes the medical, the battle fitness test, which will mean running fully kitted or squatted for one and a half miles in 15 minutes. Apparently 10% of applicants don't even make it past this point. Running one and a half miles in 15 minutes with about 60 to probably 80 pounds of gear. That's insane. And you're already probably exhausted. That pace for even an average person in running shoes and shorts isn't too bad. Now you start your real training. To join the Navy SEALs, you need to be a natural born or naturalized American between the ages of 18 and 28, although at 17 you can join if your parents say it's okay. If you want to become an officer, you can be up to the age of 33. The first woman ever started the training in 2017, but dropped it. And the reason why that is with the officer, I feel like, is because in the US and probably over there as well, um officers have to go to school like you have to have a four-year degree to become an officer in the u.s military that's soon after you'll need to have a clean record and many background checks will be done you'll then undergo physical and mental tests including an eye test to make sure you have under 2070 vision as for what shape you must be in well you are going to go through hell with the seals so they suggest you follow their navy special warfare physical training guide this includes lots of long and short swims and runs lots of interval training as well as other workouts as for other strength training their gym workouts basically tell you you'll have to be as strong as a bull as well as have all the cardio attributes. You'll be screened before you can start training and that will mean you must show that you can run one and a half miles in 11 minutes but not squatted. This also comes after a 500 yard swim in 12 and a half minutes, 42 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, and 6 pull-ups. All with a short rest in between. How many of you guys in the comments right now could do that? Running a mile and a half in 11 minutes after swimming 500 yards in 12, 12 minutes, 30 seconds, 42 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, and 6 pull-ups. That would be ridiculous. Do you know how exhausted you would be? 
between. Once you actually start training with the SAS, the first phase lasts four weeks. This will test your endurance and ability to navigate through the wilderness, that being a harsh mountain range in Wales. In 2015, a young recruit died during this exercise just half a kilometer from the end. He died at the part nicknamed VW Valley, standing for Voluntary Withdrawal Valley. Two other soldiers died that day too, leading to an inquest into the treatment of soldiers. Some of the activities in the mountains RIP to the soldiers though, man, for real included a 15 mile hike to start with. Those that can get through that then have to do a 40 mile hike carrying a 55 pound backpack, a rifle, plus their food and water. They are not allowed to use any established trails, but they do have a map and a compass. After that, they can rest a bit and start the weapons training phase as well as do parachute training. After that, there is- <laughs> Look at that just animation, bro. Boy, that's, that's pretty funny, ain't gonna lie. But I did wanna say though, man, Thank you guys so much for 150 subs. My goal was 100 subs just a couple days ago, and you guys just smashed that. And, you know, my next goal is the 500. Really appreciate the love and support. I hope to get it by October. We'll see what happens. And, uh, yeah, appreciate you guys. Six weeks of jungle training, usually in the rainforests of Belize, Borneo, or Brunei. The last phase is called Escape and Evasion, which will mean being forced into some horrible survival scenarios as well as learning how to handle being interrogated. This will include humiliations and other psychological harassment, as well as being blindfolded, deprived of sleep, given nothing to eat or drink, being put in stress positions, imprisoned in a small cage, and having to listen to loud noises all the time. SAS tough guy turned novelist said physical injuries finish a lot of people off during training, but you need a lot of strength of will to get through the psychological stuff. In 2016, the Washington Times reported that one Navy SEAL died in- Before we get into the Navy SEALs, yeah, so the last video I reacted to um, with the what do you have what it takes to become SAS, it kind of went over the, the torture sequence of it, you know, survival one, and it's wild, dude. Like, they're sleep deprived, they're hungry, they're stuck in, they're handcuffed and blindfolded and put in weird positions in a dog cage, like smashing chains on top of it, bro. You gotta be built different to get through that. And on top of that, apparently they strip you naked and um, bring in uh, female officers and they just belittle you and laugh at you. Crazy in three out of the last four training classes. One was a drowning, another a suicide, and another a car crash after drinking heavily. The post states that the six month training will include a seven day stretch of little sleep, self-induced hypothermia, and brutal physical conditioning known as Hell Week. It's Hell Week where most recruits drop out. The training in Colorado starts with five weeks of pre-training in class. Get through that and you enter the realm of pain and indignity. The Navy SEALs website doesn't go into specifics, but states that you'll be tested to your limits of fatigue. This will include running through sand, swimming in oceans, sometimes in the middle of the night with your clothes on, rappelling down cliffs or buildings at speed, enduring cold and heat, getting lost and finding ways out, combat training, long distance underwater dives, weapons and explosives training, mission planning, tactics training, and more. Hell Week seems to be the worst part. One soldier described it as being designed to put you through 24-7 days of no rest and continual harassment. From his class of 300, only 19 completed the training. In all, it will last five and a half days and you'll almost continuously be pushed to your limits. You are allowed no more than about four hours sleep during the entire training. You'll also have to deal with integration in what's called the survival What'd he just say? No more than how much hours of sleep? Evasion sleep during the and you'll almost continuously be pushed to your limits. You are allowed no more than about four hours sleep during the entire training. So in five and a half days, you get four hours of sleep. And you're cold, you're wet, you're chafing, you're blistering in your shoes, your boots. Crazy, man. You're, oh, you gotta be awful. Hands are numb. Oh. You'll also have to deal with integration in what's called the survival, evasion, resistance, and escape phase. Former SEAL Brandon Webb said it will involve sacks over your head, being beaten with sticks, and humiliation. It's kind of, here he said that some people lose their minds. It's kind of like the SAS training, you know, like with the, that they just talked about the little survival torture. At least thing. after that you get some classroom time. For seven weeks you'll also have a land warfare phase as well as parachute training. If you pass it all, you'll be given the Navy SEAL Trident, but then have to do advanced training. This will include sniper, communications, and free fall parachute training. Once you are done, you'll have way more weapons to use than a regular soldier. In the SAS, this will include a C8 carbine assault rifle, an ultra compact individual weapon, an M16, an HK MP5 submachine gun, an HK417 sniper rifle, an AW50 anti-material rifle, handguns, tear gas, canister launchers, stun grenades, rocket launchers, portable anti-personnel mines, grenade launchers, surface-to-air missiles, and many more things it will take too much time.
bro and you would be a you would be, you walking with those weapons bro and you have the sas hat on or trident with the seals bro everyone knows you're just the baddest of the bad bro you just top dog you alpha and you get all the respect in the world bro that's crazy they mastered all those jack of all trades i have to talk about you'll also of course get all the kit including things like body armor according to the navy seals website your regular seal on land will carry such things as the cult automatic rifle 15 the m60 machine gun m203 grenade launchers a shotgun an sasr 50 caliber sniper rifle an m107 anti-material rifle a beretta m9 handgun a 20 millimeter gatling gun and at4 rockets Again, these are just some of the most used weapons as the list is endless. So, who do you think has the best training? Do you think you could get through it? Let us know in the comments. Me personally, I don't think I could get through it, but you guys let me know. Do you think you guys have what it takes to become a Navy SEAL or a SAS member? Let me know in the comments and who you think is better, SAS, Navy SEALs. I know we, we boys, you know, we're family. We like, we like this in there with our special forces, you feel me? So just, let me know and please leave that like and sub if you enjoyed this content and I'll catch you guys on the next video, man. Peace.